The Indian subcontinent stretches from snow-capped Himalayan peaks to sun-washed tropical beaches and is home to over a billion people. I'll begin my trip in the bustling commercial city of Mumbai and meet some of its underworld inhabitants. Then I'll visit Varanasi, one of the holiest cities in the world, to take an intimate look at some of its more unholy residents. I'm itching to get right in amongst the local culture and I've timed my trip to Mumbai perfectly. The end of the monsoon's heavy rains are a time of celebration, so I'm joining in the festivities at Mumbai's Juhu Beach. This could only be India. The smell, the noise, the colours. Look at this, absolutely amazing. And this is why I love the place so much. <laughs> but these types of crowded situations are heaven for a contagious skin condition. It's called scabies because it's caused by the tiny scabies mite infesting your skin. You can track scabies from prolonged person-to-person -person contact. That way, the mite can hop off one body onto another. And for that, you need crowded conditions. The scabies mite itself is about a third of a millimetre in size and translucent, almost impossible to see with the naked eye. They tunnel telltale paths under your skin. Preferring the soft skin around the webs of your fingers, the torso, or even around the breasts and genitals. A scabies infestation causes a severe full body itch, which feels most intense at night. It's basically an allergic reaction. Our immune systems attempt to expel the mites. Pregnant females tunnel through your outer layer of skin using flesh-dissolving enzymes. They spend their entire lives under your skin, happily munching away for about a month. As she eats her way into your body, she defecates and lays eggs along the way. She moves about five millimetres a day, laying two or three eggs, which hatch up to 48 hours later. In a healthy adult, our immune system limits the scabies infestation to about a dozen mites, and they can easily be treated by any number of creams and lotions. The people who suffer worse from a scabies infection are the immunocompromised. In other words, people who might have had transplants, people with HIV, and the very old. With no immune system to keep the number of mites down, they suffer huge infestations, which cause a honeycombing of the skin called crusty scabies. This is when the body is taken over by thousands or even millions of scabies mites. The droppings and dead skin they leave behind can cause the skin to crust. It's difficult for medication to penetrate the thickened skin. But while crusted scabies is extremely contagious, it's also relatively rare. Usually, you only contract scabies from intimate personal contact. You won't get it just by shaking someone's hand. But with 300 million cases of scabies reported worldwide every year, it's enough to make your skin crawl just thinking about it. After last night's excitement, I'm off to explore the city by day. Formerly known as Bombay, Mumbai is a city famous for its crowds, colour and chaos, even at seven in the morning. I've got a funny feeling he wants to get past me, but I'm a bit of a novice in Bombay riding. If you want to see the city, get out early, because after about half past seven, these streets will be gridlocked. I might just as well throw this bike away and take to my feet, because it'll be a good deal quicker. Another reason for getting out early is the pollution caused by the traffic. A recent report claims that breathing the air in Mumbai is the equivalent of smoking 20 cigarettes a day. The city has grown into a huge metropolis, housing just under 20 million people. Oh my word, now I've got the local lads on their bikes racing me. But Mumbai is also home to a vast population of nasty bugs that are waiting to trap the unwary. And I'm off to find a market full of them. Oh. 
Mumbai's lively side streets are packed with people and market stalls selling just about anything you can imagine. And I'm keen to find a few bargains. But this really is a case of buyer beware. Unsanitary meat especially can give you a whole host of unsavoury diseases. But you can't assume that the vegetables are completely safe either. I've done my market research, Indian style, and found these two stalls right at the back of the market. And you can see all the stuff here looks absolutely wonderful. But don't let appearances fool you. Eating unwashed fruit and vegetables can give you an unwanted parasite, like the world's most common human worm, the Ascaris roundworm. Their eggs are transferred oral fecally. You guessed it, that's when someone else's excrement finds its way into your mouth. Mm. <laughs> Ingested eggs hatch in your small intestines, releasing larvae that migrate through the intestinal wall and travel to your heart and your lungs. Mature worms can make their home in your gut for years, sharing the food that you eat as they mate and grow to over 30 centimetres long. In severe cases, these worms can move throughout your body, even trying to exit through your mouth or nose. And these are what can come out after a single worming treatment. It's a shock when you first see them, but these are Ascaris worms, or round worms. They're quite common. You catch them from eating things contaminated with faeces. They're usually relatively harmless. You might not even have any symptoms, but if you have a lot, they can cause a stoppage. They can perforate the gut. You can even die from a severe infestation. The only way these will come out of you is if you've killed them, normally with a worming drug or something that has killed them off. Then you'll naturally expel them. In areas where sanitation's poor, fecal matter containing Ascaris eggs can infect the soil. That's why it's so important to wash fruit and vegetables before eating. Ascaris eggs are easily transferred to root vegetables or the hands of workers, and into you. But they've got nothing on a bug that's almost always fatal, given to us by man's best friend. Mumbai has a huge population of feral dogs. A recent explosion in the number of dogs on the streets has in turn led to an increase in the incidence of rabies. Every year, India has more rabies deaths than anywhere else in the world. Transmitted in the saliva from the bite of an infected animal, rabies is a virus that attacks our spinal cord and brain, causing inflammation which destroys brain cells and ultimately results in death. I'm heading into the suburbs to help Abod, CEO for an organisation called the Welfare of Stray Dogs. He wants to eradicate rabies in Mumbai by vaccinating local dogs against this killer virus. How did you get involved in this? Well, I always liked dogs. But I, very frankly, I always had cats at home, so I always liked <laughs> animals. But um, I thought the stray dog issue was a pressing problem for the city because, uh, very frankly, dogs are much closer to human beings than, than any other animal. They're more sure. domesticated. And, and they're also the pets of the poor in the city. The municipal corporation used to simply cull stray dogs, but human rabies deaths didn't fall. So a bod runs a prevention campaign to vaccinate street dogs against rabies. So it's best to approach dogs, you know, sit down, and uh -huh. then, then try and see that you're not a threat to them. Sure. Okay. To be on the safe side, you should always assume that an animal is carrying rabies. Just because a dog's quiet doesn't mean that it's safe. For a start, it might be more likely to bite because it might be scared. But secondly, rabies can change the behaviour of dogs in several ways. It's not just like the movies where you've got a ferocious dog with saliva dripping down its face. Sure, that's probably got rabies, but it can make them very quiet and withdrawn as well. A BOD's team vaccinate as many dogs as they can and revisit them annually for booster shots. As a non-profit organisation, the welfare of stray dogs relies on grants and donations to fund their yep. work. Crikey, that was quick. I'll let her off. A bod's work has halved the incidence of rabies in the city. That was pretty quick. She's gone now, so yeah. I guess it's time to look for another yeah. one. Yeah. If there's any dogs silly enough to be out in this rain. It looks like the monsoon season isn't quite done yet. 
These downpours keep everything fresh, but it isn't long before it's back to sweltering heat. So I'm heading indoors to escape the midday sun, and it's a chance to try out the world-renowned holistic Indian medical system called Ayurveda. Hello, Hello. Hello, Hello Mike. Sengupta, pleased yeah. to meet you. Hello, same here. Dr. Hashi Sangupta specializes in a revitalizing treatment called Jalo Kava Sharma. Whatever that is. Okay, Mike. Now we'll just start with this uh, therapy. Uh -huh. It's called as a leech therapy. A leech therapy? A leech therapy. It's a very ancient Ayurvedic therapy. Oh, you don't look in that fashion, okay? <laughs> it's not, not, nothing very uh, unusual. Leeches have been used in medicine for thousands of years. And one of the reasons is an ancient belief that they'll siphon out bad blood. I've got to say, at the moment, they look very small, don't they? Well, once they suck your blood, my God, they'll just swell up like anything. <laughs> OK? <laughs> you want to catch all the one, is it? Not really. <laughs> I'm quite happy with them in there. It's time for my traditional Indian therapy to begin. Teeth and all. Are you ready? Um, for the therapy. Maybe if you give me a minute just to psych myself up. Well, it's not necessary, Mike. I just told you that they are very, very beautiful creatures. Mm. And we can just place them around your part and immediately they'll start sucking the blood. Cool. Okay? Excellent. Well, that makes me feel an awful lot ha happier. Particularly placing them around my part. <laughs> Luckily, the only part these leeches are going on to is my back but they can be applied to any body area that's causing discomfort. We gently push the leech in that particular part where it is supposed to sit. And it there it bite. goes. Yeah. There she goes. It's now already sad. It very quickly. Apparently, leeches secrete an anaesthetic, but I can personally vouch for that being a myth. People will lead you to believe that uh, having a leech bite you is completely painless. And I wouldn't say it was painful, but you can definitely feel it. Ow! If, if you it's biting. Get, it's biting, yeah. Ooh, that one, that one a bit more viciously than the others. As far as I can tell, I have a grand total of five leeches on my back and I can feel them all biting. Oh, they itch. They use a combination of suction and muscles to suck out your blood and secrete an anti-clotting agent into your bloodstream. They are totally harmless creatures. Mm -hmm. So they'll just go on uh, sucking the blood till the time they find uh, impure blood, they'll just go on and on. Right, well, they'll find plenty of that in me, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, because they have that special affinity for impure blood. This belief that leeches remove impure blood isn't scientifically proven, but chemicals in their saliva do dilate blood vessels and boost blood flow in the area they're attached. Ooh. Just because something hasn't gone through conventional, modern medical trials doesn't mean it doesn't work. And although I'm trained in conventional science, modern science, I certainly wouldn't poo-poo traditional methods like this. And the fact that leeches have been used for so long must mean there's some truth in the fact that they're of medicinal use. I'm happy to have these guys feeding on my back because I know they're clean and free of disease. But wild leeches can carry bacteria, viruses and parasites from previous blood sources. Leeches will just keep on sucking until they're full when they simply roll off to digest their meal much like me after Christmas dinner. Once the leeches are full, they're put into turmeric. Turmeric is well known in traditional medicine as a stimulant, which affects the digestive tract both in humans and in leeches. It helps them purge their blood meal, ready for their next victim. Oh, yeah. See the way they just Look at that. pour out the, like a fountain. Oh, so that's my impure blood. After all that hard work, and now you're making them puke it back up. In traditional medicine, turmeric is well known as an antibacterial agent and has a variety of uses. I think I'd rather not see the state of my back because it feels like there's quite a lot of blood there. My wounds will keep seeping for several hours because of the anticoagulant the leeches have injected into my bloodstream. OK, Mike, get up. Oh. 
I oh. hope it was a very wonderful experience for you. It was a great experience. Thank you very much. Just take care. Go home. Ooh. Have a breather. Oh. And don't overstress your, yourself. I won't. I promise I won't overstress myself. Hope you'll come back soon. I will. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye. Fingers crossed that the leech therapy has boosted my immune system because I've still got plenty more of India to see.